Hello all, this is Neil from Edureka and welcome to this interesting session on what is IOTA. Now before we begin the session, I'd like to just clarify that we are not biased towards any cryptocurrency and this does not deal with IOTA cryptocurrency. Rather than that, it deals with the underlying technology which is the IOTA implementation as such. We'll try to understand what is Internet of Things first. We'll talk about what is IOTA, how these two are related. Then we'll look at the various features of IOTA, what makes it stand in comparison to all the other implementations of blockchain that are out there. And finally, we'll have a look at how IOTA works. Now, I hope you guys are definitely excited for this session. Moving forward, let's first try to address what is Internet of Things. Now, before we talk about IOTA, it's quite important that you understand what Internet of Things is. Now, Internet of Things has gained a lot of buzz today. Internet of Things basically lets you connect everyday things which are around us, which have an embedded technology in terms of electronics, software, or even a sensor to the internet and which enables us to collect and exchange data to have a smarter system as a whole. Now, this in turn makes it quite easy for us to have a day to day experience as well. A smart home is something that we all want, and that's also something that's quite possible. In today's world, we all live with sensors and electronic devices around us. So having a smarter environment definitely is something that's quite useful as well. Now, the other key term associated with IOTA is blockchain in itself, because this is an implementation of blockchain as a whole. So first to address what blockchain is, let's first try to understand what is a block. A block basically is a simple file which records all the most recent transactions or informations which have not yet entered any prior block as such. A block in itself can be compared to your account ledger as well, where all the transactions which have not been printed since your last time will be printed. So same thing is going to happen here. All the validated transactions which are approved will be present in the block and this keeps going on as well. Now blockchain basically is a collection of these blocks interlinked to each other. Every block will have a reference to the previous block and this in turn forms a chain as well. Now what IOTA does is that it changes the overall idea of blockchain in itself. Although IOTA is believed to be the third generation of blockchain, let's first try to address and understand what IOTA is. IOTA basically is an open source distributed ledger system which focuses on providing secure communication and payments between machines rather than individuals on the Internet of Things platform. Now what it does is that it implements two greatest technologies of this era, blockchain and Internet of Things and it brings it together with respect to this platform as well. Now you might be wondering why we cannot use any of these other implementations for the Internet of Things implementation. Now the idea here is that each of these blockchain implementations although has its own advantage also has a set of disadvantage as well. Now let's take the Bitcoin blockchain implementation itself. Now one of the major challenges when I look at that implementation is that there is a bottleneck that happens when it comes to creation of blocks and validation in itself. What happens is that only a single block gets created every 10 minutes. Now, although there are millions of users today that are out there that are using the Bitcoin blockchain implementation, but let's think about the scalability when it comes to Internet of Things. There are close to trillion Internet of Things devices that will be available by 2020. Now, handling the data coming from trillions of devices is not easy when you need to provide a secure communication channel with them as well as validate and manage the payment that are happening between these devices. Now the idea of building a blockchain implementation for Internet of Things is so that the machines themselves can communicate with each other and perform the transactions without human involvement. What basically I want to imply here is quite straightforward. Let's take an example to understand this better. Let's take an example of a smart home. Now let's say I have a community where a lot of smart homes are available. One of the major requirements in a smart home is cleaning. And as you might have noticed today, there are a lot of smart home cleaners that are available today. But let's take a realistic scenario. How many of us would actually like to buy a smart home cleaner which would actually run just once a week? Not a lot of us act to be practical. But what I can do is that I can get a few devices for the community. And let's say if I want a service of that device, what I'll basically do is that my smart home will communicate with that device. It will request a specific time slot for the cleaning up of the house and the payment would be made by the home itself. So here the machines are communicating with each other and creating a payment based system for the service that they are providing as well. So this is how the artificial intelligence and IoT environment is growing quite rapidly. And today we have a lot of this quite possible as well. Don't think what I'm telling is something that's quite far distant into the future. This is quite realistically possible in the next few years itself. 
Now let's look at some of the key features which make IOTA stand up in comparison to most of the other blockchain implementations that are out there today in the market. One of the most key factors which makes IOTA quite easy and effective in the platform of Internet of Things is the capability of its scalability. Now in comparison, yes, IOTA can have a lot more cryptocurrencies generated. Yes, it can manage a lot more number of transactions as well. Now if you are comparing one of the most essential factor for any cryptocurrency or any blockchain implementation, I would go with transactions per second. That is how much amount of information can be processed per second. Now if you take the Bitcoin implementation, basically it can handle about three to five transactions. And if you look at Ethereum, that's close to 15 transactions per second. IOTA on the other hand can handle close to 1000 transactions and again it can keep growing as well. Now this is just a recent stress based information that I'm telling you. The highest would be Ripple with about 1200 transactions per second. But again the ideology with respect to Ripple again is quite similar with Bitcoin although it can handle a lot more transactions but there's always the issue of a single information source being created here as well. Now we'll be addressing this while we go forward and how IOTA tackles this as well. So in terms of scalability, IOTA offers a lot more when you compare to most existing implementations of blockchain that are out there. Coming to the next point, modularity. Now the IOTA protocol in itself, if we talk about it, it's quite lightweight and easy. But with the use of modularity, what they've done is that they've actually not compromised on the parallel functioning capabilities. What I basically am trying to imply that each component associated with the IOTA platform can in itself work on, without compromising on the overall functionality as well as the speed of the system as well. Now one key essential factor that makes IOTA stand up in comparison to the others is microtransaction. Now this in turn actually reduces the need for miners and thereby completely eliminating the need for transaction fees in itself. One of the biggest challenges for Bitcoin blockchain or most of the blockchain implementations that deal with cryptocurrency today is the transaction fees that are associated. Earlier the idea of blockchain was to introduce a system that did not bring the transaction fees but today the ideology has changed a lot. Today even with Bitcoin, Ethereum or Ripple most of these include a certain amount of transaction fees that are associated with any kind of transactions that you perform. On the IOTA platform, the transactions that you will be performing will be independent of transaction fees as they are microtransactions as such. Finally, let's talk about the quantum systems. Now, one of the biggest challenges most blockchain systems that are out there today face is a challenge in future that will happen is that if we use a quantum computer which has sufficiently high computing powers, then we can actually provide false transactions into the main block itself. This in turn can actually cripple the entire system providing a chance of compromise in the security itself. Now let's say I provide 50,000 false transactions into the Bitcoin blockchain system itself. Then it becomes highly impossible for us to remove from this. Once a block of false transactions is added to the blockchain, then it becomes unremovable because of its immutable feature. And if I create newer chains based on this false transaction block, then it becomes harder and harder as well. So these challenges can actually be overcome in IOTA because it uses triple hash function known as curl to ensure that it's not crackable even via quantum computer as well. Now let's actually try to understand how IOTA works and how it's different from any of the other blockchain implementation. Now in IOTA there are no blocks or even blockchains in itself. This is how it is different. IOTA uses a new data structure based on directed acyclic graph which replaces the need for blockchain as its underlying infrastructure as well. Now the use of Tangle thereby in itself reduces the need for minings and transaction fees as a whole. Now how does it work? Let me just give you an idea. So here this is a rough representation of how the Tangle would look like. Now each of these is a directed acyclic element. Okay, basically what do I mean by directed is that there is a direction for each of these. Now each of these circle in itself is a transaction or site for better reference. Okay, and each of them are linked to at least two other transactions as such, leaving the initial transactions. Okay, now this in turn these two other sites validate the transaction and the direction specifies the connectivity between each other. Now the edges that you are seeing are basically the tips of the transactions. Now these are just new transactions which are yet to be confirmed or validated. So any edge or any site 
or transactions for that matter which is not linked to two other transactions or edges are unconfirmed transactions for that matter now to help you understand better let's just take a simple example let's say i'm going to add this transaction to the tank a simple transaction for that matter now when i have a new transaction i select two edge nodes and then i connect them to this transaction now once this transaction has been confirmed then what i'm going to do is that i'm going to connect it and then going to bring new transactions and then keep connecting it then for so this in turn ensures that there are multiple transactions that are happening while one is being validated as a whole as well so this in turn increases the chance for scalability and makes it quite faster as well when you compare to normal blockchain transaction now what it basically also means is that if more and more transactions are going to come into the iota then it also increases the speed of iota processing as well so more the transactions more the people involved with it the faster the system will be getting as well so like i said iota has at the rate about 1000 transfers per second this will keep increasing as the number of people involved in this also keeps growing now iota is still a product in development and has a lot of various options available today for people to learn and explore as well now iota is not just restricted to one specific language implementation our is restricted to a narrow mind thought as well now if you are to look at the iota's git repository you will find a lot of various applications but one thing that you should definitely look out for is the various library implementations of iota that are available there so you have python you have java you have javascript that has also been introduced then you also have rust you also have various other programmings like c sharp and this keeps growing as well now iota is one project that is out there that you should definitely look out for because it becomes the connecting bridge for two of the most important technologies which are revolutionizing today's market So if you are interested in blockchain and IoT this is definitely a project that you should really look out for Now with this we come to a conclusion of today's session hope you have a great learning experience thank you and goodbye I hope you enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our edureka channel to learn more happy learning